This is Tim Catalano again, and I'm going to show you the variations on doing linear arrays with my advanced array modifier. So let's add a trusty old teapot in here. We always need an object to array. And then we'll add an advanced array. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add some count to it. We'll add 10 of them in there. You can just offset in any of the dimensions here, and you get a nice linear array. You can offset in the X or the Y or the Z. Right? An easier way may be to use the gizmo. So I'm going to highlight this gizmo. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, the one key. I'm just going to grab it and pull it out. You can see that it's changed our, our X offset there. But you can move it around in any of the offsets or any of the dimensions, and it changes those ones as well. We'll go up and down here. So that's the basic linear array. Let's look at some variations on this real quick. Right? So I'll reset all that. The first variation is I'm going to change it to using the object bounds. So I'll add 10 again. And you see when you first hit any of the keys, it's going to pop out and it's going to make it work by the bounding box, right? So 1 equals 1 length. Now if we go in the other dimension, you see the teapot's not square, so it actually lines up against this line, or this wall here. And same thing with in the z-axis. It's going to line it up. So that just kind of makes it easier when you want things to line up. Which is convenient too if, uh, say, your object is changing size lower in the stack. It's going to keep your array, uh, you know, bound to that distance there. This other mode that you can use is the final transform here. And using the final transform, when you pull it out, you're going to be pulling out the last object rather than the first object. It's a little bit easier when you're trying to do a whole bunch of different things. Like, say you don't know how many you want at first. You just know that you need to fill up this much space. You're going to add however many that you want to make it look right, and you're done there. And then if you need to come change it later, it just kind of uh, spaces them in between uh, your first pot and your last pot there. An important concept to understand with uh, advanced array and with linear arrays is, is the concept of stacking your arrays. So inside of each individual modifier here, you can only maintain, you know, do a single dimension worth of work. But when you need to do multi-dimensional arrays, you'll need to stack another one. I'm going to rename this one real quick. This is going to be our, our X dimension. And then we'll do one in the Y dimension here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10 in here again. And then I'll do the same thing with my final transform. I'll use my gizmo and I'll pull it right out. There you go. Now you have an X and Y linear dimension, uh, linear type array, right? Square. Now we just want to go one more step. We're going to add a, a Z dimension here on top changes to 10, switch this to the final transform, use our little handy gizmo here, and pull it up, and now we have a cube. There you have it. There's a whole bunch of other functions that I'm going to make some videos for as well, with uh, radial arrays and all sorts of different fun little arrays, but I think for linear arrays that about covers it for now. Thanks for watching.